Hello and welcome. My name's George and my channel's all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the Alchemy Synth plugin, which is a free plugin that comes bundled with Logic Pro. We'll take a look at how we can filter through all the different presets that are found in Alchemy, as well as how we can tweak those presets to our own liking. So let's dive in. So I've got this track here that I'm working on and I wanna add a synth pad to this track. So I'm gonna use Alchemy to do that. So the first thing we need to do is create a software instrument track. So we'll go up here to the plus button and we'll make sure we select software instrument and we'll go ahead and hit create. So that created our track here. I'll just drag this to the bottom for now and I'll rename this to synth pad. And now let's go ahead and load Alchemy on this track. So we've got our track selected. We'll go over here to our channel strip and under instrument, we'll click there. We'll go down to Alchemy and we'll select stereo. Just center this a bit. So this loads up Alchemy and you can see here we have this kind of browser section. And we've got a few different windows that we can look at. We've got the simple window, which just gets rid of the browser and just gives us this bottom portion. And then we have this advanced tab, which this is where we can really dive in and tweak every single aspect of the sound. I'm gonna go back to the browser tab and you'll notice on the right over here, here's where we have all our presets. And you'll notice at the very top here, it says we have 3,000 459 presets. So that's a lot of presets to go through just to find a synth pad. So one way we can get to our desired sound quicker is using the browser here. So you'll see here under category, we mostly have different instruments, but also some different descriptors like arpeggiated sound effects and soundscapes. Now, as I mentioned before, I want a pad. So I'm gonna select pads. And then now you'll see we've automatically gone down to 606 presets, which is still quite a few. So I'm gonna make a few more selections in the browser to narrow this down a little bit more. So under subcategory, for example, well, why don't we try layered? And if you wanna make a second selection within the same category, then you can hold down command. And let's say I want evolving, so I'll select that as well. Now we're down to 125. And now under genre, I'm just gonna select ambient. And under timbre, let's say I'm gonna select clean and organic. So again, holding down command and warm. So now we're all the way down to just four presets. So let's have a listen to some of those. Okay, so I like that sound. It maybe lingers around a little bit too long for my taste for what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and see what the next one sounds like. I like that one quite a bit as well. Let's move on to the next one. And let's listen to this last one we have here.
Okay, so out of those four, I think I like this last one the best. Now there's a few things we can do to tweak this sound to make it more our own. The first real easy one is if we go down here under this perform tab, you'll see this little grid here and with some different descriptors, ensemble, swell echoes, low and lovely, and so on. And we can simply click with the mouse and drag, and you'll notice that a bunch of these parameters are changing as I do that. So if I hold down my chord, for example, and I move it, you'll hear the sound of this patch change quite a bit. So that's a quick and easy way to change the sound of the preset, simply by changing where you place this on this little pad here. And another cool trick you can do is actually just automate this so that it moves while you're playing a chord too. So that can make your synth sound change over time. I kind of like just the basic ensemble that we started with, so I'm just gonna go back to that for now. Now this sounds similar to the other ones. It lingers around quite a bit once I take my hands off the keyboard. So I'm gonna tweak that a little bit so that the sound doesn't linger on as long. Now there's two things that are contributing to this. There's the release of the synth itself, and then there's also some effects on this patch. So let's start by looking at the effects. And the effects are found right here under this tab. So we can click on that. And we can see there's a delay and there's an acoustic reverb. So if I just play the sound quickly as is, I'm gonna play my chord and then take my hand off. So you can hear how it lingers there. And if I turn off the delay, just by clicking the on button and now it's shaded. So I've turned off my delay and my acoustic reverb. We can see what that does. So that sounds quite a bit shorter now. So let's start with just the reverb and we can scroll over here and we can see our reverb here. And so with just the reverb on, it sounds like this. So the reverb's contributing to most of that lingering effect. So we can tweak the time. So right now we're at 3,413 milliseconds. So let's dial this back maybe to around 1,000 and see what that sounds like. So that's a little bit shorter. I'm kind of liking that. Now let's go back and turn on the delay and we'll see how that contributes to things as well. So you can hear that it's kind of delaying and lingering a little bit longer again. So on the delay plugin, the feedback time is what's gonna determine how long and how many repeats of the delay we get. So we're at 50%, so why don't we just make that, cut that in half, so let's say 25%. And there's two different settings, one for the left channel and one for the right, so we'll bring that down here as well. And let's see how that sounds now. I bring it down just a little bit more. Let's go maybe around 20%. Cool, so that's a little overview of the effects. So you can tweak any of these. The, the other one that we have on right now is an EQ in the middle here. And we could even add a fourth one if we wanted to. So you have all these different effects built right into the plugin. And the third tab that we haven't looked at is this ARP tab. So this is an arpeggiator. So right now it's off. If I turned it on here just by changing the mode. So here we have up, down, up and down, and so on. So now if I hold my chord, it's actually gonna break it up and play it as an arpeggio. Now an arpeggiator generally works better with some quicker attack 
type sounds. So this is a little bit longer attack. So the notes are kind of blending into each other, but hopefully you can hear that a little bit, how it's singular notes rather than just one held chord. I'm gonna go back to turning this off and we'll go back to our perform here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the other thing we wanna take a look at is if we want to change the attack and release of the sound itself. So that would happen over here. You can see we have attack and release, decay and sustain. So if I bring my release, for example, down to zero, that sound is going to cut off a lot sooner than what it was before. So the sound itself cuts off, but we hear a little bit of the delay and the reverb from the effects. So I'm gonna bring that back up a little bit to smooth and same with the attack. So right now it kind of swells in. If we wanted that to come in a lot quicker, we can do that. And that would help if you're using that arpeggiator. Since I'm gonna be using this sound as a pad, I want it to kind of swell in a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that attack back up. Maybe even a little bit more. Now I'm pretty happy with the sound right now. I'll just quickly move over to the advanced tab just to show this. And this is where you can tweak things even further. So on this particular sound, we have two sound generators under sources, so A and B. So if, for example, if I turned off B, then A on its own sounds like this. And B on its own sounds like this. Then we have the two blended together, which we can control the blend further with the volume knob. We can change the tuning, the panning, and how they're sent to our filters, which are found over here. So I won't go any further on the advanced tab in this video because this video is meant to get you up and running quickly. So for that, I suggest you stick with the browser tab and tweaking your sounds in here. And you can take a look at the effects tab as well and tweak your sound in there. So now that I'm happy with my sound, I'm gonna go ahead and close Alchemy and let's go ahead and record this in. So I've got my cycle set up here. I'll just go ahead and hit the letter R, which will start recording, and then we'll record our synth pad in here. So there we go. So I hope this video can help you get started using Alchemy and start adding some of these synth sounds into your own compositions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.